there we were with this so-called semi-empirical semi approach, which later on turned out to be more like pseudo-scientific approach. <laughs> and Washington, the people in Washington who hold the purse string and dole out the research money, started to wonder what's going on at the Land Locomotion Lab. So they sent down a committee called the Kerr Committee, K-E-R-R, -R, Jim Kerr was the chairman of the three, three or four members, and Becker and us had to make a presentations of our work to them. Uh, I'm jumping ahead a little bit by saying that Becker also contracted some high-powered scientists to work on mobility problems using the theory of plasticity, and viscoelasticity, and two of them were present at this, at this presentation, namely Professor Drucker from Brown University, very famous, was at that time, and Hayford uh, with. So uh, finally, Kerr, uh, Mr. Kerr turned to Drucker, Dr. Drucker and said, well, what do you think about this approach? And he said very diplomatically, there is nothing better so we have to work with this, we have to conduct further research, but right now that's, that's, what, that's what we had. So, now, before you think that I'm here now to badmouth Becker, uh, I must say that that's not my purpose at all, because Becker was an individual who had uh, tremendous ideas, and he was totally de dedicated to to land locomotion, cross-country mobility research. And really, he founded ISTBS, in my opinion, single-handedly. Very, he was 95% but Becker, who founded the ISTBS. And as I already alluded to, he, he also uh, realized that this, what was done there was not quite enough, and he wanted to explore the possibility of using viscoelasticity and plasticity. And also, he, was, uh, he already thought about vehicle vibrations, the effect of riding over rough terrain, how it would affect, affect uh, the driver and the occupant. So he contacted Professor Drucker and Hayfordway, also a viscoelasticity expert called Schiffman from Lancelier, and Two, two professors, Bogdanov and Kozen, who from Purdue, who were attacking the, the build the right problem. And they made very significant contri early contributions. Uh, they introduced the power of spectral density as describing uh, the characteristics of rough terrain and so on. So, also, Becker had ideas about vehicle morphology. He postulated, based on his research, that that if you take the same ground contact area, but it's long and narrow, it's much better than if it's wide and short. Uh, well, that, that tire that you showed there it doesn't quite uh, <laughs> follow that principle. Yeah. But based on that, we created, and he, with his guidance, uh, an elliptical wheel and a hopless wheel, and uh, he was also a, 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 a great advocate of articulated, articulated vehicles. So he, he was a very versatile and, and it wasn't just involved in, in rigid wheel soil interaction. In fact, the young engineers at Land Locomotion Lab were quite apprehensive every Monday going to work because Becker had about all weekend to think about new ideas <laughs> and then he chewed us out, how come we haven't been working on that yet? You know, so, he, he was a, a, quite a character. Okay. Uh, when, when we joined the Land Local Lab, uh, he put us to work right away. And as a result, by 1958 we produced and not just the Hungarian engineers, Americans and Lisbon and so on, 43 papers and five research reports. And this included, besides soft soil mobility, it included problems about obstacle negotiation, vehicle morphology, as I mentioned, uh, 
and a particular wheel and articulation and so on. And, but in 1961, General Motors hired Becker away because they were thinking about bidding for the lunar roving vehicle and Becker was a famous scientist in the area of, of mobility, so they figured that they needed a team for, for developing a, 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 a lunar roving vehicle. So, uh, as a result, Becker became familiar with the methodology that was used by NASA. And so that early on, even in 61, 62, he was already advocating the necessity of a comprehensive mobility model. So he was kind of prophetic because nobody else was talking about that in those days. And actually, he, he, he foresaw what later on became the NATO reference mobility model. Well, anyway, after he left, uh, Scotty Liston, who was a major by then, resigned from the army and he became a civilian chief at the Land Locomotion Lab. And the whole atmosphere changed a lot. Uh, there was much more freedom given to us. And also, Scotty not only accepted criticism, but he even asked for it. So, as a result, um, again, many new ideas came to surface, uh, and several test beds were built.